right, so this, uh, this talk is about lambdas and procs, but I have called them pops, uh, plain old procs, because I wanted to distinguish between the procs that are lambdas and the procs that are not lambdas, so just for fun I decided to call them pops. Um, most of what I want to say is on this slide. Um, but before we, we cover this slide, there are basically four kinds of, or four ways of writing um, parameterizable chunks of code in Ruby that I know of. One is blocks, and then there are procs, and there are, are methods, and there are lambdas. And this talk, we're going to be covering all of those, but the ones that we're going to be principally focusing on are the two kinds of procs, which are lambdas and the ones that aren't lambdas. Now, both of these are what we call closures. We're not going to be focusing on closures in this talk. Um, they can be relevant. They're basically functional objects. And they can be distinguished in Ruby 1.9 and later because the, the proc object responds um, uh, to a, um, a method called lambda question mark. Um, <clears throat> now the difference between these uh, is that their semantics when they're called are rather different. Um, the procs uh, have yield semantics, which means that they're in a similar way to blocks. And uh, the semantics of calling a lambda are more like calling a method. So really, that's the main point of this talk, that the plain old procs are basically a functional object representation of a block, whereas a lambda behaves more like a method. If you can remember those two key points, you'll get that's about 90%. Um, so to create them, the, the plain old procs can be created in two ways, either by using proc.new, where new is, a, is the new method on the proc class, or there's kernel.proc. And normally, you don't have to write kernel.proc. You just write a proc, because the kernel module is included in object. So it's always available. Similarly, the lambda uh, method of kernel is also available within objects. So you can write lambda anywhere in your code. But the, <clears throat> the newer way to write a, uh, a lambda in your code is with a literal, which has that kind of funny syntax with the arrow. Um, or uh, you can also have a method object and call two proc on the method. And that also gives you a proc, which is a lambda. Uh, for calling uh, procs or lambdas, the syntax is basically the same. You can call them directly in three different ways, or you can call them uh, the way that you invoke a block, or the block style call from an iterator with the yield keyword. And then uh, the semantics, as I discussed, are different. Uh, blocks and the plain old procs have yield semantics. The methods and lambdas have what we call invocation semantics. And we're, most of this talk, we're going to be looking at, at these differences. And uh, I just wanted to run through the slides very quickly, because I want to spend most of the time here looking at code. But this is basically an outline of the things that we're going to cover as we go through the code. So, so first of all, let's um, let's talk about uh, the method object. Uh, let's create a class. Oh, let's let's go into IRB. First. <laughs> okay. So let's create a class foo. And in honor of uh, Nick's uh, passing his bar, let's create a <laughs> method bar. OK. And now what we can do is we can create a new foo object. And then there is 
a, a method called method to which we can pass a symbol and it will actually return a method object. If we ask what the class of that is, it's method. And um, then the other thing to note about that is that we ask it whether it's a, a lambda. Whoops. Did I get wrong? You haven't turned it into a proc? Oh, yes. Yeah, we, have, we can turn it into a proc. And as you can see, if we ask if it's a lambda, it says true. So method object can be turned into a proc, and that proc is a lambda. Now we are gonna, that's all we're going to say about the method objects. The method objects, although they in many ways behave similarly to um, lambdas, uh, they, they also are different in, in some important respects and are probably more used in metaprogramming than in functional style programming. So with that out of the way, uh, let's proceed. Is there somebody start the clock? Yes, very good. Um, now with, with that out of the way, uh, let's actually look at some uh, simple uh, definitions of products. So first, first of all, I'm going to, for convenience, define a method called yield to. And um, that is just going to do a yield and end. And what this is going to enable us to do is we can do, for example, yield to now and plot pass it a block. And it, we've invoked the block through the yield statement. So that's basically the construct that we're going to be using over and over again in this talk. We'll get it, make it slightly more complicated, though. Uh, I'm going to get this mouse out of the way because it's massive. Uh, the, um, so uh, the, the next thing that we'd like to do is to create a proc for the block. So let's do p equals. Um, proc and pass that a block. And now we have a proc and we can invoke it with p.call as you saw from the earlier slide or we can use the square bracket operator or we can use this funny syntax p. Uh, p. Dot open parentheses. Okay, and all of those will work. But we can also call that proc through the yield method. So we can do yield to. And then if we want to pass a proc as a block parameter, we have to use the ampersand sign in front of it. And that will now invoke the proc as, a, as though it was a block that was being passed to yield. And that also prints out proc. Now let's create a a lambda. So lambda, we can create it with this syntax. Okay. Uh, by the way, you notice that if we ask whether p is a lambda, it's not a lambda. Whereas lambda dot lambda is happily a lambda. All right. And again, we can do lambda dot call uh, lambda with the square brackets, um, lambda with the dot parens. And we can also, funnily enough, we can also yield to the lambda in the same way that we were able to yield to proc, passing it as a block parameter, even though a lambda is more like a method than a block, we can still um, invoke it in the same way using yield. Um, one other point is that let's, let's define another uh, method here called uh, get. 
And we're going to include in the signature of our get method a block parameter. And what that, that block parameter does is it captures any block that's being passed to the method. So what I'm going to do inside here is I'm going to do, I'm going to have it return an array of proc and b. Now, what that's going to do for us is that the proc method, which is kernel.proc, we could also use proc.new inside our get method, actually captures a block or a proc that is passed into the method uh, as, a, as a proc object. In the same way that that ampersand b argument also captures the same thing. So we can see that pretty easily here if we call our get method and we just pass a block to it. And we, we actually capture two separate procs but they're the same, as you can see, the, the IDs are exactly the same. Um, so does everybody understand what's going on so far? Any of that, uh, any questions about the, that syntax? Didn't you explain that weird character you used? Mm -hmm. What, the ampersand? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the lambda, that's the weak letter. Yeah, that's the weak letter lambda. <laughs> so what is that? <laughs> <laughs> is that some special feature of Ruby that you can type that character and it does special things? <laughs> no, actually, it's a Unicode code point 03 BB, I think. Okay. It's just yeah. the name. Um, and uh, of course, the lambda is, is a concept from uh, uh, functional programming that was invented uh, about almost 80 years ago. And uh, the, the lambda calculus has been one of the ideas in computer science which has contributed to the development of a functional program, and that's, that's the reason it's named the way it is. Um, so uh, now that we've gotten the basic mechanics out of the way, uh, let's talk quickly about the, the two differences that we noted on that first slide between um, the semantics of using uh, lambdas and the semantics of using the ordinary procs. So for that purpose, um, I want to define, redefine our yield to method in a little different way. Um, let's define yield to to take um, an arbitrary number of arguments that we'll capture in, in x using that syntax. Um, And it will it will take a block. The block parameter is available. Yeah. It, it, it can either be there or not not be there, and you can still you, you can still capture that uh, uh, proc. It's been, you can capture the block that's been passed in by using the, calling the kernel proc method inside the inside the method. Um, and then what we're going to do here is then we're going to yield the variables that were passed in to the block and end. Okay? So uh, what I then want to do is I dem demonstrate a simple use of this. Let's yield to just an ordinary block that takes two... Um, <coughs> oops. Okay, what did I do wrong here? Oh, let's, let's yield one and two to an ordinary block that takes uh, two parameters and returns an array with those two parameters. So we got back an array with two parameters. Now let's, let's actually make a proc out of that block. I'll just copy this. Right? And we'll also make a lambda uh, that does the same thing. And you notice that the, that the lambda syntax 
and gives you the the arguments to the lambda inside the round parentheses so that it looks more like a method call. And that's, I think, deliberate in the choice of that uh, new syntax for defining a lambda literal that was introduced in Ruby 1.9. So th those two things uh, do exactly the same thing. And they can both be invoked. Uh, even though the proc is basically representing a block, whereas the lambda is actually a function, the lambda has call semantics, the proc has yield semantics. But interestingly, both can be called either way, either by directly calling the, the, the proc or through, uh, through yield. And we'll demonstrate that. So I can do p dot call passing this one and two, and we get one, two back. Or we can call, we can do lambda.call and pass it one and two, okay? Um, similarly, we can do yield two. Um, passing one and two, and, oops. What would I do here? Oh, yield two. One, two, and then we pass the block as the third argument. Okay? Or we can do yield to one, two, and our lambda passing the lambda as the third argument. You notice that that works even though we didn't include the block parameter in the argument list when we defined when we defined yield to. But now look at the difference. If we call p dot call with the wrong number of arguments, it's very robust. It just picks off the two that it's interested in. Similarly, if we call p, p dot call with no arguments, it substitutes nil in for the two arguments. Okay? However, let's try to do that with lambda. Lambda dot call, one, two, three. Wrong number of arguments, three for two. We do uh, lambda dot call passing in one. We get wrong number of arguments one for two. So that shows you one of the two differences between the lambdas and the ordinary props that the um, the semantics of argument passing is different. When you yield to a block, um, it actually assigns the values to the arguments in a way that is similar to, but not exactly the same as parallel assignment in Ruby. Whereas with, um, with lambdas, as with methods, you actually have to uh, match the correct number of parameters, parameter by parameter, even though there's some flexibility around defining methods um, that take a variable number of arguments, there still has to be a variable there to capture that variable number of arguments. All right, so that's our first difference. And the second difference has to do with the way that the prox and lambdas handle returns. So uh, let's define another, let's redefine P to be a proc that just returns zero. Actually, let's have, let's have it return 42, and then have zero as the last statement, so that if for some reason it didn't return 42, it would return zero, okay? And then we will have, do the same thing with our lambda. Um, we'll have a lambda that doesn't take any arguments here, and you could define it, do it like that. But if there's no arguments to put in it, you don't need to put in the parentheses. You can just use the bracket. And we'll return 42 and have another statement that we return the zero as an expression there. OK, now let's see what happens um, if, we, um, if we yield to these. So if we yield to our lambda expression, 
we get back 42. Very nice. However, if we yield to a proc, we get a local jump error, unexpected return. Now, the reason for that is that a lambda basically just returns from itself. But a proc that is not a lambda um, actually tries to return from the method in which the, the, the proc was defined. And since the proc was actually defined outside our yield to uh, method, um, it, the program tried to do an illegal jump from inside the function to outside the function, giving us this local jump error. So this is another important difference between procs and lambdas. David, you look oh, like you're unhappy yeah. with my explanation. I think that's, I think, I think if you did this exact same thing inside a method, it would work. You would not get the unexpected return. No, you don't get the unexpected return in that case if you put it in the method, but you'd still get the same. The difference would manifest itself in a different way. It's, what would happen is you would actually return from that method yeah. prematurely, which versus um, just returning from the, the, the yield. So if you, have, if you have a method and then you said yield, and then you said below that um, zero, in the first case, it would return 42. In the second case, it would return zero. So it would do the, um, the opposite here. So your lambda would return um, directly to the yield. The, um, the so the, the here, this is what lambda. you're talking about, right? So the, the, the lambda simply returned, and then the method proceeded and returned 41. But if I do, if I yield to P, whoops, we so still did that. No, I didn't do so it. I had to define it in your, the method. The problem yeah. is you're trying to return from this thing that was defined at the top level of I or B. If you, if you had to find that proc inside a method and you were still inside that method at the time when you passed the proc. Right. Then, then you'll return should, from that work. method. Yeah, you would right. return from so, that method. So if I do P equals Rock, uh, so, yeah, return three here, and then I do p dot call. Yeah, just it's yield. yield to do it the same way. Oh, yeah. yield. oh okay. And then I'll do yield to p, and then I'll write here seven, and then I invoke. G, I'm going to get 3 back because the, the that return statement forced G to return. Yeah. Whereas I wrote exactly the same thing with a with a lambda, the lambda would return, and then the rest of the method would execute, and G would return 7. Yeah. I thought you said something about how return was defined outside of yield 2, so there's going to be some problem. But yeah. So it's not the case. Yeah. It's okay. So. Um, now, one way to make this the, make the behavior more similar between the lambdas and the procs is instead of using return, you can use the next statement. Um, many people don't know this, but next, which is what you usually use to return to, to, to execute the next iteration in uh, some kind of a loop, uh, actually can have a value. You can pass the value. So if what we do is we define p equals proc of uh, proc next 42, and lambda equals next 42, now when I do a yield to p, it returns 42 and yield to still works with the lambda. Now in the case of the lambda, there's not really any difference between next and return, because return returns only from 
the lambda and not from an enclosing scope. Um, so that's one way of making, uh, of, of making your code more uniform. In fact, you could even argue that they shouldn't have even allowed return to be used in blocks and in, in lambdas. And you might have ended up with a little more uniformity in the syntax. Um, so then there's one final thing I wanted to, to bring up, which is that uh, it's, it's, there, there's actually a subtle difference in, that was introduced in, uh, in uh, Ruby 2.1 uh, that's d different from Ruby 2.0 in that they, they found a little bug. Uh, I mean, the, the, the tricky thing about all of this is that uh, when that you have these, these two different types of props, the ones that are lambdas, the ones that are not. The non-lambda ones are like blocks. The lambda ones are more like methods. And yet, they can each be invoked with the other pattern. And so the question is, is an ordinary prop that's invoked with call should that behave like more like a block or more like a method? Or a lambda that's invoked through yield, should that behave more like a lambda or more like a block, given that it's being invoked like a block? And this is just a little bit of ugliness, I think, in, 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 in Ruby that probably has some historical roots. And they actually found that there was a mistake in uh, versions uh, prior to uh, 2.1. And we'll just take a quick look at that. Um, if we look at this code here, this is actually it was covered in issue 8693. We have our yield to method here. Um, and then what, we, what we've done here is we have four cases. One where we yield to a, uh, we yield to a proc. The other next where we invoke the proc, then yield to a lambda and invoke the lambda. And what it, it turns out that in versions prior to 2.1, that yield to lambda if the lambda contained a return statement, as this one does here, um, would actually cause the function or the method yield to lambda to return rather than to proceed. And they fixed this. So um, all we have to do to see this is uh, let's exit out of here. And then, um, <coughs> oops. Um, that code we were just looking at is right here. Okay, so I'm just going to execute that. And as you, you can see, that in, in version 2.1 of Ruby, yielding to the plain old proc gives zero as does invoke, and yielding to a lambda, invoking the lambda, both give one. However, if I switch this to Ruby 2.0, uh, and let me just remember, uh, let's see, where we have this. Okay, so now I'm using uh, Ruby 2.0, and I'm going to call the same file. Now you see that yield to lambda uh, returned to 0 rather than a 1. So unfortunately, I uh, we put them right next to each other here, RVI uh, 2.1.0. There you can see the difference.